Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub. And on this episode, I'm going to give you a tour of my mining rig. Hey guys, well thanks for watching. I'm going to shoot this video a little bit different today. I'm going to shoot it handheld with my cell phone. So be sure to leave comments below if uh, you like this style of video or if you don't and let me know. A lot of you are probably asking, what is this whole mining thing and can you really make money at it and why would you want to do it and all of that. Hold on to the end of the video and I'll talk about some of that and you might be surprised. Um, but first, let's take the tour of the mining rig. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is that this is in an open frame instead of in an actual case. Um, and there's several reasons to do this. Um, number one is that it's much, much easier to keep it cool, um, but it does take up a lot more space. Now you can actually get cases specifically for mining. Well, this is a case specifically for mining. It's an open air or an open frame case, but you can get actual like server cases um, or big desktop cases. Um, the problem with those are you'll have to push a lot more airflow and they're going to make a lot of noise. Although Although you can certainly fit them into a smaller space. Um, you can even get rack mount ones that you can fit in kind of a data center cabinets, 42U racks, those types of things. Um, but I chose this one because I didn't want it to be really noisy and um, it looks really cool. And it also fits in my house very easily. I can put this in a spare bedroom or in the garage or just about anywhere and not have to worry too much about it. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it long term, but, um, but we'll see. So let's kind of start off with the top. So up across the top I have, um, you'll see six GTX 1060s from NVIDIA. And um, these graphic cards are the single fan version. Now you're probably thinking, you know, wow, don't these things put off a lot of heat? Is that enough to cool it? Well, the great thing about these GTX 1060s is that they don't use a lot of electricity. Um, they're only using, according to my power supply, 93 watts a piece. And they're running at pretty much full bore. I've got them overclocked um, plus 500 megahertz each right now. And I think I can go to 800, but I'm still just, you know, trying to see what the stability is like at this level. Um, if you move around here, your first thing you're going to notice, a lot of people are going to go, wow, what's all of that? And so, first of all, this is a Biostar motherboard. It's specifically built for mining, um, although that's completely unnecessary. They just guarantee that this board will work um, with mining software and will work with the um, risers. And that's what you're looking at here. These are PCIe risers. And basically, they're little USB 3 boards that plug into each PCI slot. Let's see if I can get a little closer here for you. They plug into each PCI slot and then a USB cable is connected to them. And that rises to the back of the card, which you can see here. And um, you have these little PCI um, boards, PCIe boards that each video card plugs into, all connected USB. Now you're probably asking right now, why the heck would you want to do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't really need the bandwidth um, as much as you would think. It's all about loading data on the card and then letting the card do the processing. So there's not as much data going back and forth between the card and the motherboard as, as, as some of you might think origin or initially. Um, the second reason is, look how close those PCI slots are together. You would never in a million years be able to get six cards plugged into that motherboard. Um, I'm sure you could probably make a motherboard where you space the slots out really far, but then again, you know, it would just it would just wouldn't make sense. So this allows you to easily get six cards plugged into one motherboard. Now the next thing is the power supply. I chose an HX1000i from Corsair. Um, this is a thousand watt power supply. One of the reasons I chose this is because of this right here. It supports Link. And Link allows the video, sorry, Link allows the power supply to transmit information about its usage to the motherboard. And so I can find out all kinds of things like wattage and voltage and how fast the fan's running and all types of, uh, inf of information like that. Now, that's very important to me because when I was researching this on the internet, a lot of the people building mining rigs said, well, there, you have to have a 1200 watt power supply. There's just absolutely no way you can get around it. And I am calling bullshit on that. It's absolute bullshit. And here you go. I have six GTX 1060s up here. And if you look over here on the screen, you will see that this machine is pulling about 520 watts right now. 
with six cards running at full bore, overclocked 500 megahertz each. So yeah, you don't need a 1200 watt power supply to run a miner. You could easily run this on an, even an 800 watt power supply. But being that I didn't know what I was doing and this was the first time I built one, I wanted to make sure that I had something that I could monitor it with. So you could certainly buy a cheaper power supply than this one. In fact, if I built a second rig, I would absolutely buy a cheaper power supply than this one. So the case, um, as you guys have already you know, kind of noticed, and I, I mentioned earlier in the video, that this is a um, op open frame case. This is honestly made of nothing but aluminum extrusions. And um, some people call it maker beam or maker slide. It's the same stuff that the X-Carve is made out of. And um, you can get that literally anywhere. Now, I paid about $150 for this case. Um, and you could probably make this, I kind of did the math, um, you could probably make this case for about, oh, 105 bucks, 110 bucks, I think. Um, it's, you, maybe even cheaper if you 3D printed these plastic things um, for the fan instead of, instead of uh, buying them. Um, so there's a couple of things that you could do there. Here's the thing, what's your time worth? And the reason I bought this case is because I put this case together in about 15 minutes and I didn't have to go sit in the garage or in the shop and cut material and figure out what all the right measurements were and all of that. So that is time wasted that this thing could be up and running mining coins. And so I just decided to bite the bullet, spend the extra 40, 45 bucks and just buy this thing pre-made, all labeled with instructions and just slap it together. Now for the CPU and the RAM, you're going to probably be surprised. This is just a Celeron processor. It was the cheapest one that I could get on eBay that would fit in an LGA 1151 socket. Um, it's got the stock cooler on it, and there's only four gigs of RAM. And you're probably thinking, wow, really? For a miner, you put that little bitty Celeron processor in here. And that's absolutely right, because none of the processing is done on this chip. It's all done on these video cards. And so all this guy is is a middleman passing data back and forth to the internet um, and, to your, and to your graphics cards. So you really don't need much, and you don't need much RAM. Um, as a matter of fact, you really could get away with even smaller. It's just harder to buy something um, you know, smaller or cheaper these days. Um, around to the back... I have a 5400 RPM laptop drive. This is just something I had laying around. It's super slow. It's molasses. Again, all it's there for is to boot the operating system up, and, uh, and that's it. There's, there's just really no need to have anything else. All of the massive heavy lifting is done up here using these video cards. And so not much need for anything else down there. Okay, so over here on the screen, I have um, a few things running. I've got the Claymore Miner, and um, it is the mining software that is doing all the mining. I'm currently mining Ethereum um, on this box, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, I have MSI Afterburner up, and Afterburner is what allows you to overclock the graphics cards. And so I've got them all overclocked right now to plus 500 on the memory and plus 75 on the core. Um, the core doesn't really seem to make much difference what I set it to. Um, it's the memory um, clock that seems to make all the difference and how fast I can hash um, all the cryptography. And then um, the fans are, I just have them set to auto and they're really, I mean, they're not even, they're about 50%, I think, most of the time. And so then the next thing I have up here is the Corsair Link software. And this is really fantastic because it gives me all the information on the temperatures of everything and the fan speeds of everything going on in the system. And so you can also monitor this remotely. Um, I have a little tool called Awesome Miner that sends all this data to a, a single box where I can, can you know, monitor it um, remotely because most of the time I won't have a monitor keyboard mouse plugged into this machine. Um, additionally, when I'm not busy or when I'm not using my main desktop, I have it mining Ethereum as well. And so Awesome Miner kind of puts all those stats together into one single view. Okay, so the question is going to come up, and it's a very good one. Why video cards instead of processors? Aren't these processors a lot more powerful? Well, it sort of depends, and you need to think about this a little bit different way. And I think I have a way to describe it. It may not be 100% technically accurate, but I think it will get the point across. And that is, this machine, or this uh, processor down here, um, or if this was a Core i7 or some uh, much uh, more beefy processor, it would have roughly four cores, let's say. And um, it's clocked at, let's say, two gigahertz. Now you're thinking, okay, 
that should be plenty of power to mine coins. Well, not exactly. Here's what happens. Think of this guy as, uh, as, let's say it has four cores, then think of it as four rocket scientists. Really, really smart dudes. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to ask them to go build a pyramid. And so you're going to get uh, you're going to get a guy um, with a big whip and he's going to whip these guys and force them to carve big blo giant blocks and build a pyramid. And with those four really smart dudes, you're still not going to get very far very fast. These guys, these video cards, these graphics processors, these have 1000, I think this these have 1800, uh, maybe 2000 CUDA cores. And so they have a whole lot more cores than these guys, but they're kind of dumb. They're only capable of doing one thing really well, and that is processing graphics for your screen, or in our case, we're repurposing them for processing hashes. Basically, they're very good at math, and a very specific type of math. Um, but other than that, they can't do a whole lot. And so the, the analogy here would be, you're gonna take 1800 or in this case multiply this by six so now you're going to take all of those thousands of really dumb guys and put whips behind them and you can see how much faster you can build that pyramid so you don't need a, a bunch of smart guys you need you know one or two smart guys to you know figure it all out and then a bunch of laborers to just do the work and um, and that's what you've got here and that's why these mining rigs all use gpus instead of processors to mine so by this point, you're no doubt asking, can I make money from this? And the answer is yes, um, but it's also sort of, and it's also very risky. Now, there's an age-old saying, and you really need to know this before you go into anything like this, especially if you're doing it for more than just a hobby. Now, to be honest with you, in this case, I'm just doing it as a hobby and just doing it for fun and to learn. But the old saying goes, only invest what you can afford to lose. And so don't put any more money at risk than you can actually afford to lose. Um, in this case, I can afford to lose this, but I won't because I'm going about it a different way. You could go just buy some Bitcoins and invest in them because we think that they are going to go up in value um, over time. Um, in fact, they have. They went from like a dollar a piece or maybe I think they were maybe five cents a piece um, up to they just recently tapped out, I think, at $19,500 for a day or two. And I think they're back down to like 15000 today. Um, but certainly if you had invested with that strategy, you could have lost every dollar you put in or you could be a billionaire today like the Winklevoss twins. So here's the next thing. This particular rig is incapable of mining bitcoins. It's not possible to mine bitcoins with GPUs anymore. They're just not fast enough. Um, you have to have ASIC um, built, uh, or ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. So they're purpose-built machines designed specifically to mine bitcoins and they cost a couple thousand dollars a pop. Um, if you can find them. They're really hard to get a hold of right now because everybody and their brother wants one. So with this machine, you need to mine something else, such um, an alternative coin, such as Zcash or Ethereum or those types of things. Um, in my case, I'm mining Ethereum on this box. And Ethereum is right now, it's around um, $480 a coin as I, or an Ether as I make this video. And, you, and uh, Ethereum can still be mined with GPUs. In fact, it's sort of designed to be ASIC proof. It requires a lot of memory. And so this is kind of the optimal method to mine those right now. The way I have designed this machine and the way I've built it out, um, it should be able to make about um, $11 a day mining Ethereum. But remember, it costs about $1,500 to build this machine, so there is quite a long payback time. Here's the other thing, and this is what's really important when you're doing something like this. Um, if you go and buy the Bitcoin, or sorry, if you go and buy the Ethereum, and, and it's probably going to go up in value, but the whole bottom of this, this thing could fall out tomorrow um, if the government outlaws it or any number of things happen. And so with something like this, I've made an investment in hardware. So tomorrow, if the whole thing goes to zero, I still have my hardware. And I can still use this for other things. I can put those video cards in other computers or sell them on eBay or whatever. Um, and so at the end of the day, I haven't lost that much. Also, there's a good chance you know, that I'll make a lot of that money back um, just by selling off my Ethereum before it crashes. So there's a couple of, of different ways you can make money, assuming that there's going to be an end to this. If there's no end to this, then who knows? The sky's the limit. And that's a big, heavily debated topic and one I'm not really going to get into in this video because there's about 10,000 reasons why everybody's probably wrong about both sides of that. It will probably correct, but I doubt the bottom will ever fall out of it. 
okay, so why am I doing this? Um, the reason I'm doing this is because it's fun. I mean, it really was fun to build this thing, put it together, and figure out how all of this works. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about cryptocurrency and the market and how it works and, um, you know, the, the good side and the bad side of it. It was just a lot of fun. Um, did I do this to make money? Well, not directly. Um, although, if I do make money at it, then that's just icing on the cake. And um, just to let you know, um, and, and I won't go into too many details, but I've already made about uh, three grand off of my cryptocurrency mining, and that's actual money that is in my bank account. And so, yes, you can make money at this if you know what you're doing and you do it right. Um, if you go out there and just slap a machine together and you know, there's certainly other builds that you could make here. I mean, I could have slapped this thing full of GTX 1080 TIs and mined, you know, coins, you know, three times as fast as this machine will, but the payback on that would be like three years. So you've got to balance all of that. Um, these GTX, uh, 1060s that I put in here cost $250 a piece versus a graphics card that costs almost a grand. And so, you know, you have to, you have to weigh that all out. If you're literally doing it as nothing but a hobby and you just want to go as fast as you can go um, mining, then certainly you could build a much more beefier machine. This one was designed as a compromise to have fun and to see if it could actually make a little money. And so far, I'm doing pretty well. So I haven't really decided how far I'm going to go into this little mining venture. Um, I don't know if I'm going to build another rig um, and have two or three of them. Um, I do know um, I'm going to use some of the profits that I've made. In fact, I've already ordered a Antminer S9, which is an ASIC-driven um, machine specifically for mining Bitcoins. Um, again, I've already made that money. So if I buy the miner, and then I'm I'm just I'll just break even. Then I guess at the end of the day, if if the thing goes crazy and collapses, but uh, I'm going to buy one of those and try that. It takes about six to eight weeks to get one of those um, from China right now. And so it's a little bit of a wait time. I have a couple of friends who already have them and they're doing quite well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But um, this has been a really interesting, fun thing for me. And that's really mostly what it's about is learning and having fun. So I will put um, links in the description to where I bought all of this stuff um, as long as, uh, you know, a completes parts list um, as always. And uh, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this build and if there's something that you would have done different. Um, I'm always interested in hearing, you know, different perspectives on, on these types of builds and, you know, what you think I did right and what you think I did wrong. So let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Also, let me know what you thought of this style of video. It's something that I could put together uh, much quicker than my normal videos. Um, so if you guys want to hear from me more often, this is one way that I could do it. Of course, it won't have the same quality um, um, and production value as my normal videos have. See you in the next video.